If you don't have a low friction technology platform that allows you to operate your business with the nouns and verbs that you work in on a day to day basis, like prepare to be out of business in the next five years. My name is Connor Deeks. I'm the CEO of CodeStrap, uh, formerly ran the Palantir Alliance at one of the largest consultancies in the world. So we started the company to deliver a product that allows companies to actually use this software in a more efficient and uh, with higher outcomes and helping companies ride the wave of the AI revolution, but do it in a way that they can control that disruption. Uh, Because right now it's the Wild West. People are building stuff and using things that make no sense. Uh, They're in pilot hell. Uh, So how do you actually build proper technology that can advance a business, but also drive huge return on investment? Uh, And I'm doing that with my co-founder, Dorian Smiley, who's on the call, who uh, previously was... Um, a VP of technology for uh, uh, a huge top five Gen AI consumer apps in the world. Uh, he was also famous in the Palantir community uh, with the moniker CodeStrap, which we've adopted as the company name. John Baim, CEO of Ranger Data. Um, been working in and around Palantir since 2019. Uh, I first saw the platform um, at AT&T where I brought in into at and and then launched the platform, grew to about 5,000 monthly active users. Um, and since leaving at and the, the the biggest gap in the marketplace that I've seen is how do you actually take a transformative technology and leverage it operationally to be able to get outcomes out of it? Um, it's fun to have just another toy, another kick-ass you know, platform that you can do stuff with. But if you can't drive the outcomes, um, then you know what's the point? And so I think that that maybe you want to work with but Dorian Connor here was they understood same premise of you know when we talk about Palantir we talk about the house versus the hammer we are obsessed with the the, the house what are you trying to build with this hammer I mean the hammer is cool and all and it's great but that's like not the reason we're into it the ability to deliver quickly high value with an internal team where you're not having to go and crazy outsource um and so really, you know, excited to partner here with CodeStrap because they see this exact reality. I think folks are so obsessed with the technology they build, sometimes they forget that you do it in service of an outcome. Um, so that's why we work together. When we think about our model, which is more of a consortium, how do we get uh, the ecosystem to deliver for clients to deliver those outcomes quicker? There's still a, a back office function to actually get contracting done between two parties. Well, when you look at big companies, you look at the places we've worked at before, that's a huge cost center that really shouldn't be. To boil it down, the problem statement is how do we contract quickly, essentially at zero cost? If we've got a digital twin of our business, why should we be the only ones consuming it? I would love for people to just be able to send their ideas into our ontology and get back something that I trust from a proposal perspective, because that's our business. If I was a manufacturing business, it would be about the parts I'm building. If I was a CPG, it would about be about what I'm putting on the shelves and what am I shipping. If I was, you know, a a, a restaurant, it would be about how I'm uh, gapping the orders between what's in my freezer and what I need to get from uh, the central distribution next week. It doesn't matter what my business is. I just there's no value add in me going and doing the incremental day to day work of saying, yes, I continue to trust my business. We just started building this app. Uh, it's going to be a mobile app for Connor. Uh, and this is where he can either type in the requirements or we can use the um, audio recorder to record the requirements. Uh, and then what that'll do is transcribe them for him. We to do all that. We bring in Foundry to perform vector search and do grounding and collect all this data and transform it. Um, but that's what allows the model to kind of infer um, what Connor's talking about. What we're simulating here is an agent in the field uh, who's working with a customer to try and get RFPs from our uh, subcontract, subcontractor network. And uh, in this case, I'm asking for an RFP from North Slope and Ranger. Uh, you'll notice everything here is in natural language. All of the communication that's going to take place between our agents is in natural language. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to ask our, our AI agent we built in, in Foundry with our own sort of custom solution and interpreter for the ontology. Uh, it's going to go through now and interpret like, okay, how many vendors are in this request? Uh, 
who do I got to send them to? Let me get their exact emails and submission processes figured out. And then let me create a plan to submit these RFPs and then go ahead and do that work. And then I'm going to send back the results to the sales agent uh, who's going to, you know, wait for this response. In the interim, while we're waiting, I'll I'll share this tool we also built to monitor RFPs uh, submissions that are created by our agent. So we can come in here and see what the agent submitted along with, uh, and you'll see here, we now have the submission to Ranger and North Slope. Um, So we can come in and like kind of manually observe these and see what we get back from the APIs. On top of that, uh, we created this uh, tool called Foundry Tracing Foundations, which lets us see when the agents call back in or any function for that matter that's invoked in Foundry, we can see how long the execution took, what the status of the execution was, and that's very useful when you're debugging these um, workflows. Let's jump back over here. Uh, we can see Benny has gone ahead and submitted these RFPs, and you can s- and ben- Benny uh, is just letting us know he's waiting on the RFP responses from both vendors. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Paul, who can now show the automation executing on his side. All right, so looking at the automation um, on my side, um, you know, as that request for, uh, for RFP gets sent over, we obviously need to respond back to that. And so in that response, we're just looking for any request and then responding back with this submit RFP response action. Um, and what that's doing is kind of three steps. We can see that popping into the AFP a little bit, it's, it's actually getting that message history, um, basically consolidating the, the context as the conversation goes on, as the back and forth between our two agents uh, takes place. And it's you know, prioritizing the latest information over prior information. So that's the, the purpose of this one. And then it's just validating, hey, I expect there to be certain type of information in this request, right? Just like you would over email, um, you know, a proposal is sent over and you're like, hey, you forgot the contact information. Hey, actually, I need more detail on the deliverables, on the schedule, what have you. Um, this is actually doing that validation to let code straps agent know, hey, we need more information here, we need contact here. Um, and, and if that's true, then it will send over requests for additional information. And then as that goes back and forth, eventually uh, we get all the information. And at that point, we actually process that request. And what that's doing is it's looking at the availability of our staff. That's all in the ontology. And it's also looking at future assignments, future work, um, our resourcing pipeline, uh, and also our costing to say, okay, based on this project scope, here's the people and when we can start, how many of each role type we need. And then ultimately, you know, the timeline and, and, and the project costs that we're proposing. Looking at the automation, you should see that that is happening here. And yep, here's this one, uh, the latest one here at 209. Um, and we can see that that has processed. And so with that, I'll hand it back over to, to Dorian and Strap, and he can show you what that looks like. Uh, because we have now sent the response back over to uh, to them. Awesome. All right, let me go ahead and pull that up. Uh, and as you can see, I got the vendor response here. Um, and I can see that it's missing information. So it's missing the customer information along with, uh, yeah, so it, it needs all the valid customer info. So what I'm going to do is, in this scenario, the sales agent can use the send message feature here. What this does is it sends a message into this thread. We actually built a threads object that tracks all of our conversations that are used in our Gen AI application nodes in Foundry. Uh, It's linked to the state machine that's running behind the scenes. Uh, You can learn more about that in a separate video. Uh, We do our implementations. It's all built on state machines. It doesn't use logic, but our solution actually can be used inside of logic, which is interesting. We're going to go ahead and just send this message to fill in the missing information. What will happen now is Benny's going to rehydrate the execution of this workflow from where it left off. It's going to reason about the next best action to perform. And what Benny will do is he'll say, all right, I see I'm missing information. Um, What I'm going to do is go ahead and resubmit the RFP. And you can see here the details of the resubmission process. I can see I got a valid uh, response code back from Ranger. And now the automation is going to pick back up on all side and go ahead and finish executing. And when it's done executing, what you're going to see is a a finished um, RFP here. You'll see the valid RFP response. The actual response in this API is really for the sales agent in the field to know like, okay, we got it. It's submitted. You will get the, the PDF of the contract. And here are the, here is the top line kind of summary um, for what's coming back. As, as 
As I mentioned, he sent back over the additional information so that just gets sent back through this, this same response um, automation. And at that point, uh, we can see that we have an initial response, which means we had a successful information load. Everything was there that we needed. And so we could go ahead and send over, you know, our proposal. And what was sent over to, to Dorian was obviously text-based. But uh, what's really nice is that we can, uh, you know, have a template for our, our so it basically fills this out and sends over this as a PDF to, to CodeStrap so that they can continue on with their conversation. Um, so at this point, you know, this could all have happened in a 30-minute meeting as the project's being defined. By the end of the meeting, they actually have a proposal in hand. I've received the same response, and then I also get the statement of work directly through Paul's automation. So again, we took uh, Benny on the CodeStrap side, sent the details over to Ranger. Ranger had a series of automation, then communicated that back to me. So I have all the requisite details within the statement of work with... Uh, with all the necessary information and in the contract filled out. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty spectacular, right? We can not only do that contracting within a minute uh, <clears throat> or, you know, a couple minutes, do it within the meeting. But uh, what we're really doing here is we're connecting two foundry stacks to companies that are using AIP and, and using agents in the contracting process, driving the cost to zero and taking an elongated multi-week process for most parties and bringing it down to a couple minutes so that we can, in fact, contract with a customer uh, within a meeting that we're discussing their need. Yeah, this is what we're doing. Well, it's because we have services businesses. All right, let's say we had a supplier uh, relationship. All right, let's say I was buying things from Connor and I said, I need all these things. Are they in stock? Well, why call up my inside rep and have him tell me about his golf game for 20 minutes when I can literally just pull up the thing and hit submit in a plain English way and then have it respond back in 15 minutes of whether or not you've got all the parts in stock or not, or if I need to go to my tier two supplier or my tier three. We just eliminated two weeks worth of back and forth that had absolutely no value add for either organization, right? If you have a well-engineered data model that's backed by an ontology that allows you to say what is externally exposable, what's editable, how do you use this ontology, what, what rate are you consuming parts, it's all in the ontology, there's no point in having to pick up the phone, right? We can just have the ontologies have that conversation and go ahead and move along with business. And that way, we just gain that two weeks back. And then we also know when we need to go to tier two suppliers on day one rather than in week three. How much faster can you operate when you don't have to put a human in the middle of these transactions? 